Hello, Lazio all over the world. We're back with another episode of Lazio Lounge. It's funny because Lazio lost against Inter, but with the victory against Sassuolo, we managed to keep the second place, which is unbelievable, and gain one point uh, from Milan and Roma, which, you know, with a defeat uh, just a week ago, it's simply surprising. Before saying hello to our host, Alison McKenzie, uh, I want to thank all our Patreon because your support is amazing and we thank you very much for your support. Patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Membership starts at just $2 a month, but you're helping us keep it going. So thank you very much. And Alistair, what do we make about these two games Lazio played? Defeat against Inter at San Siro and then a win at home uh, against a swallow with a very... Can we say emergency situation without Romagnoni and without Cataldi? Yeah, um, I think it was it was vital, wasn't it? They had to had to respond to that that defeat with a win. Um, I think looking at the fixtures, the running we've got versus the rest of the teams in this top four race, I think Lazio have a few games in there that they they really need to be winning. And we've seen so far this season that often the case has been that they've almost been more comfortable playing in these big matches and and rising to those big occasions and they have been putting away the so-called smaller teams. So um, it was disappointing to lose to Inter. Uh, it was disappointing as well to lose that late goal because it was more important than it might have seemed. Don't forget about the head-to-head um and yeah we'll get into it but i i wasn't very impressed by this as well a performance at all but yeah like you say very very important win ah so you wasn't you weren't impressed by lazio performance against as well okay we're gonna talk about that can i ask you can i ask you if you change a little bit your mind about lazio performance against inter seeing what inter did against verona because lazio has been as usual, when we lose, has been uh, uh, hammered by the press, fans, etc. This was awful performance, blah, blah, blah. And then you go and see Inter's performance against Verona. And uh, maybe you go back and think, hmm, maybe this Inter is picking up in the right moment. Maybe Inter is probably the best team at the moment. So it wasn't that easy for Lazio to play. Uh, have you changed a little bit your mind about the Lazio performance of last Saturday? Yeah, well, I was saying just before we came on, I mean, the it was one of these strange ones for me where I didn't get to see the game live um, because I was at a wedding. So I, I read about the game before I saw the game with my own eyes. And I didn't think what I was reading and what I saw really matched up. I thought that the performance wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I mean, this isn't a joke inter-team. You're playing them at San Siro. This is a Champions League semi-finalist we're talking about. Lazio weren't brilliant, but they still did enough to take an opportunistic lead. Thank you to Mr. Francesco Acerbi for the help. Um, and yeah, and then they did what we've seen them do countless times this season, really, which is rely on their defence. When, when they're not really able to take control of a game in the way they have done in the past, they are able to soak up pressure. And so the thing is, Onana did have to make a couple of saves. Lazio did create a few chances in this game. Uh, Inter obviously did have quite a lot of chances. But I wouldn't write this off as being a disastrous Lazio performance because it fell apart a bit in the last 10 minutes. I think that as away games against big teams go, we've seen much worse. Um, and yeah, like you say, I think this Inter team have they've turned a corner a bit recently. They're... They seem to have really been energized by this run to the Champions League semis. They seem to have found a, a new gear at the end of the season. So it's not a, a joke team as saying, um, like I was saying. I think this is, okay. we don't want to lose games, but I think it, it, it was a bit overblown, in my opinion, how bad this defeat was, how one-sided this defeat was. Yeah, and one thing we have to consider is that it was sort of, a playoff for Inter. If they didn't win against us, they were pretty much out of the race, right? For the Champions League position. So, yeah. Why, why Lazio could afford to lose it, 
Inter couldn't. They had to win. They only had one result. So I think this motivated even more the team, pushed Inter to give everything. While Lazio was also thinking, hey, we have a match on Wednesday and we have another match very important on Saturday. So maybe that has an impact. And let's not forget that another awful performance by Vinico Savic. Chiro Mobile is far from being at 100%, even though he had a couple of good chances and Onana made a great save on one of them. So, you know, Lazio had some issue, some problems. And um, this is probably the reason why Inter played overall better than us. What did you think then of this decision to bench Milinkovic Savic for the Sassuolo game? I mean, just tactical, uh, saving him for Milan, or, you know, is this a, a deserved dropping because of his, the recent performances? Well, I made a, a video this week on my Italian YouTube channel saying, is it possible to drop Milinkovic Savic? Is, it, is there something wrong? I mean, he's playing so bad, and uh, I don't know. I, I thought against Inter, he should have been subbed. Uh, we have Basic. I know we have a lot of questions about Basic today. Um, is it so bad, Toma Basic, that he can even come in and sub this Miliko Savic? I mean, he was awful against Inter. He was awful against Torino. Um, and we saw against Sassuolo, he came in and didn't play as as I was hoping. So, so yeah, I'm not sure he's going to play tomorrow, to be honest with you. Even though Cataldi probably is going to be out, Vecino's out, and we are counted there. We have just four midfielder with Bertini five, but I don't think he has a chance to start. So, um, seeing how Basic played, seeing how Milinkovic keep playing, um, I think no one is above the team. And so, Sergei, really? You think he'll drop him for the Milan game? Uh, I wouldn't bet on it, but you know, after Marcos Antonio's performance, I think it could be. It, it, it could be yes. Um, we have to see even how AC Milan will play. Will they play the starters after the poor performance they had Wednesday, or will they rotate, thinking that there's the Champions League match coming up? I mean, let's talk about Basic because we have question about him. Um, I don't think a goal has an impact on a performance. Definitely, and we saw it with Marcos Antonio, scoring give you confidence, motivate the player. But I don't know. I thought every time Basic came in, and we have to be honest, he didn't come in a lot of time recently. He always did his job. Nothing amazing, but he did the job. Like, like Wednesday against Sassuolo, right? So I'm asking... Is this Basic so bad that a, a below average uh, Miliko Savic needs to start ahead of him? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, look, I, th I think, well, firstly, Miliko Savic, I would be astonished if he doesn't start against Milan. I'd be astonished. It's, it's one thing dropping him for a midweek game against a Swallow, but then, like you say, there's an absence of midfielders anyway with Vecino picking up the injury, and he is one of your star players. He's your star player, really. So, I mean, that's that that's a huge, ballsy call for Sari to make. If he makes it, I would be amazed. Um, and look, maybe dropping him is, it can be a kind of mentality move, you know, to try and make that point to him before the Milan game that he's not indispensable. Um, but I, I would fully expect him to be starting. Um, on Basic, yeah, I mean, I we got asked if I've changed my opinion about um, Basic after that game. We got asked if that was his best game for Lazio. Um, I mean, I, I don't think my opinions really changed that much because of that. I mean, he, yeah, he made a good impact off the bench. And I've said over and over again that that's what we need our bench players to do. Our squad rotation players is important that they come on and make an impact in games. And I was very happy to see Basic come on and do that. And he and he looked very energized. He 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 uh, he brought a lot of energy into the game. He was running hard, putting pressure on Sassuolo and relieving pressure on his teammates at a time they needed that. And the goal was really just a bonus. 
Um, you said a goal doesn't completely change everything. That's true, but it was his first goal for Lazio, and it did come after he'd already made a good impression. He so, did, yeah. yeah, credit to him. Um, uh, does does it revise my entire impression of him as a player? Well, no, because we've had two years of him, and he's not been all that impressive. So but, having one good outing from the bench, I think, is encouraging, but it doesn't suddenly make him a player that we've not seen up until now. But the question, Alistair, is how can he uh, make you change your mind if he never comes in? Because the question is, why is he not playing? I mean, I, I really... He has had chances, though. I'm not sure about that. I mean, last time he came in, I think it was the last five minutes of the match against Torino. Milinkovic was terrible. He didn't give Basic a chance against Inter again. I, I don't understand. I mean, don't get me wrong. If Sari makes this call, he sees these players every single day. So maybe he knows there's something not working or maybe Basic is not uh, performing in the training. Uh, it's even true, Alistair, and I think this is one point people don't consider. Miko Savic, at least in the past, even when he wasn't playing great, he was able to turn around the game with one touch. A goal, an assist, something like that. So, you know, it's it's hard for a manager to take him off, thinking that, oh, maybe he's playing rubbish, but maybe he's going to make us win the game with one touch, with one goal, with one assist. So mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it, even, even if he's not playing great. Right? Could that yeah, be well, ex why? exactly. And I think that's he's got a, a massive track record. Like, we know what Milinkovic Savic's ability is. And that is why people are frustrated with him right now. Because we know he's underperforming. And that's the difference. I, I'd say with Basic, the, the reason you're right that he's not been getting a lot of chances recently I'd say the reason he's not been getting chances recently is that he's not taken the ones that he did get over the last year and a half before that. And Sari may well have just kind of made up his mind about him now. Now, if that's going to make him look even more hungry and motivated like he did on, on Wednesday against Sassuolo, then great. He can try and force his way back in. And, whereas, and it's good to see that side of him. You know, he looked really up for it in a way that I don't think we've we've seen him really impact games before. So that that's that's what I'm saying. I think it's encouraging, but it's to actually completely change everyone's opinion about what he can offer this team. He needs to f force his way one way or another into that team. And when he gets there, he needs to be performing consistently high basis. That's how you, that's the only way you put pressure on a player like Milinkovic Savage. Um, so it's good, but I'm, I think it's an opportunity as well to dovetail into Marcos Antonio here because I think it's a similar conversation when we're talking about guys who have failed to really make an impact throughout the season and then all of a sudden, last couple of games, I mean, that is a guy I've been very impressed with. So what were your thoughts on his recent form? I thought he played great against Sassuolo. And uh, the first 25 minutes, I think Sassuolo didn't understand how to stop him. And... Uh, it was a very important match. I think he has huge talent. And uh, we saw it against Sassuolo. I mean, even the goal they disallowed to Chiro, the idea of the pass to Vecino was unbelievable. It reminded yeah. me a little bit of, of Luis Alberto, right? And uh, the goal for Felipe Anderson, the assist is amazing. And he kept playing. And uh, honestly, even if... Cataldi would have been fit to play. I think you have to start with, the, with the Marcos Antonio tomorrow against Milan. I think he deserves it. And, you know, I think it's... We are sort of the, 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 the final rush. So you have to play the players that are fit now, that are on form now, rather than your best players available. And I think Marcos Antonio, as he had been played so far, is fresh. He's uh, obviously scoring against Spezia, helping. And uh, I think he has a lot of talent and could be very useful now where you see the other teams that are not running like one, two months ago. So this could definitely help Marcos Antonio. I think he's a big talent. And again, I go back and wonder why Sari didn't give him so many opportunities. Why every time Cataldi was coming off, Vecino was coming in instead of uh, Marcos Antonio. I think this type of player can really play against big team. So 
I'm a little bit yeah. surprised. Well, I mean, I think there is there is a, an argument that this was it was the perfect game for him because I remember talking about you know before the Torino game making the point that it probably isn't the best game to throw him into because they're probably being a Urich team they're going to man mark across the midfield they're going to have big physical guys in the middle of the pitch who are going to be shutting him down is that the kind of game where Antonio we're going to see the best of him probably not whereas the swallow you're you're far more likely to be able to play the style of football you want to play as someone like Marcos Antonio in a game against the swallow at home and 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 that's what we saw and I think what what the other thing we've seen differently obviously in the, in the last couple of weeks has been this ability of, of him to to really actually make an impact and and become productive in an attacking sense and and change his role slightly from just trying to be the guy who keeps the ball ticking along who shuffles it from side to side who gets it off the defenders and which is kind of the role he's been trying to play before which he wasn't particularly effective at. And now when we're seeing him getting on the ball, I think he's getting his head up more. He's backing himself more to, to play forward passes into the final third, to be looking for attacking players instead of going backwards, going sideways, to back himself to to pull things off. Um, and that's, that's something that you, you need a bit of confidence to do as a player. And I think he's found that confidence, just that goal against Spezia, you know, may have done all the uh, benefit in the world to him to just let him find a degree of confidence that makes him feel more comfortable playing his own kind of game. So is it that simple? Probably not. But I, 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 do, I don't think it's a coincidence that we've suddenly seen him starting to kind of influence games in a way he wasn't previously. Do you think... Lazio has five games now till the end of the season. Do you think five games is enough for Marcos Antonio and Basic to show that they are they deserve to stay at Lazio next year? Marcos Antonio, yes. Um, I think the the fact that it's his first season automatically, in my mind, gives him more time, gives him more breathing space. You've got to give him a bit more benefit of the doubt that, you know, he's come from uh, coming to Serie A for the first time, trying to fit into Sarri's football. And what we've seen over the course of the season is that, yes, he was unable to make an instant impact in the team in the way we hoped. But if he's able to finish strongly, it shows that there is a role he can play next season. I think the, the conversation for Basic is a bit different because he's had two seasons in Rome now and the second has been much like the first, where he's been struggling to break into this team. He's been struggling to make an impact or really show us what his USP is, what he offers to this team. Um, we were hoping that he would come in and be a kind of alternative SMS, be a kind of physical midfielder who's good on the ball, who can drive forward into attacking spaces, who can score the odd goal, be an aerial threat, all these things. And... And he's not really done much of any of that. Um, yes, okay, limited opportunities, but he's still played, what, 60, 70 odd games, I think, over the last couple of years in terms of overall appearances. Uh, I have to double check that, but <laughs> that doesn't sound quite right now to me. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a, sl a slightly different argument, um, I think. So I wouldn't be too surprised if, if they decide his time is up. I think he had a better season last year rather than this year. I remember last year Inter where he started instead of Luis Alberto and that was probably his best match so far with Lazio. Um, but the concern with Basic is if he doesn't start tomorrow, the last four matches are important, but you're playing against a smaller team. So if you play well in those games, does it really count? No, I'm not sure about that. But... Going back to Sassuolo, I think uh, Basic helped the team in a tough moment. So uh, he had a good performance. But we have to talk about Felipe Anderson, Alistair, because he played every single game. Yeah, you want to put, say something? You were wrong, right? Sorry, I did just look it up. I was almost exactly right. 65 appearances, two goals, two assists in that time. 
So anyway, move yeah, on. Yeah, but you have to count how many minutes he played because if you come in every two thousand two hundred, apparently. So not that much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we, we have we've done passage. <laughs> We understood what your point is on Basic, <laughs> but we have to talk about Felipe Anderson because uh, he was inconsistent in the past. Now, in the last two years back at Lazio, he played every single game. And not only, um, he's nine goals and six assists in Serie A this season. Again, decisive goal uh, Wednesday against Sassuolo. And what I was counting is he scored in big games this season. He scored in the Derby. He scored against Inter. He scored against Milan. Um, apart from Juventus, I think, he scored in pretty much every single big team Lazio played, even against Atalanta. Mm. So one of the reasons we are there second with Chiron Mobile not playing that much and not performing as expected with Milinko Savic disappeared after half November is because Felipe Anderson is playing unbelievable football and very consistent football, I would say. Yeah, and I don't think he gets nearly the credit he deserves no. because for some reason he is one of these players who people love to hate. You know, it's he's someone that people love to criticize. So I when he has a when he has a bad game, it will be very much amplified that he's had a bad game more than when he's had a good one. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, because he's a lovely player, you know, very yeah. technical player, explosive player, and and a versatile player he's shown this season. So I'm not really sure why people are unwilling to give him um, more credit for his for what he's done. I mean, he has been the Iron Man of this Lazio team this season. I mean, he's barely missed a game. He's had to play as a centre forward as well as a right winger, despite clearly being a more natural winger. Like you say, he keeps pr producing in big games. Um, I think maybe it's just this... The, the, the thing that follows him around his whole career is this this idea of his inconsistency. And it's true that I don't think it really applies to this season as much as in the past. He no. has had the odd bag game and he had one recently against Torino, I think it was. But, but still, I mean, the overall impact he's had this season has been very, very impressive. So we need to give him more credit. Yeah, it's fun enough because at the stadium, I'm surrounded by anti Felipe Anderson people. And uh, <laughs> I mean, during the Torino match, it was unbelievable. At a certain point, uh, his eye make a cross and he missed. And this guy say, Felipe Anderson, what the hell of cross you made? And I say, it's his eye, man. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Against a swallow, he insulted Felipe Anderson for 95 minutes. And celebrate the goal and then go back. Ah, Felipe Anderson, you have to run. It's, it's incredible. I mean, uh, Chile Mobile had a couple of chances, didn't play that well against Sassuolo. He doesn't get the same treatment Felipe Anderson get. And I mean, we should all be grateful for what Felipe Anderson did this season. Play every single game, performing really, really well. Because even the second goal, but the one Basic score, it's Felipe Anderson that gets the ball back. It all starts with Felipe Anderson. He doesn't get the assist, but it's Felipe Anderson that makes the challenge and get the ball back. Mm -hmm. And that's the last minute of a match he played. Again, all full match. He played against Inter. He never gets out as well. So this is unbelievable performance from Felipe Anderson. Yeah, I thought his defensive work was really impressive against us. Well, uh, he worked so hard. A lot of interceptions. I mean, you sounded surprised at the start of the podcast when I said I wasn't impressed by the performance against Sassuolo. So, yeah, do you wanna, I, are you are you going to present the argument for why it was really good? Well, I thought the first twenty five minutes Lazio was unbelievable, and yeah, that bit was good. I think the shame was finishing the first half with only just one goal. Um, not going to talk about the referee this time. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, we could talk about the linesman, though, because uh, we all hear every single time we hear a match uh, commentator saying that the, the, the new rule, well, what the, the linesmen are instructed is don't put the hands up, wait a couple of seconds, hear what they say at the bar, and then you, you stand up and, uh, and uh, sign the offside. Chiro's goal, I was watching the linesman because I thought Vecino was offside. 
And before the goal was on the net, he already had his hands up signing for an offside. And it wasn't even an offside. So how bad was this linesman? And going forward, he gave some throwing to Sassuolo that were never throwing for Sassuolo. I thought he was awful. But, you know, the referee has nothing to do with that. But this is <laughs> embarrassing. I mean, I love the linesman was in embarrassing. But apart I'm not from going to that, talk about the refereeing, apart from no. the next five-minute segment where I talk about <laughs> We're talking about the linesman. He's not a referee, right? So, uh, okay. But apart from that, I thought it was a shame that Lazio finished the first half only one goal ahead. We should have scored at least another one. We had a couple of chances, good chances. And in the second half, Sassuolo, you know, it's a very dangerous team. Uh, Without, when when Miliko Isavic came in, our midfield collapsed. Miliko Isavic had a dreadful game, another one. So it, it was like Lazio playing 10 men. So I thought playing in that situation wasn't easy. And overall, Alistair probably then made one great save. But apart from that, they didn't create that much, even with Patrick playing. Yeah, but we were under a lot of pressure. That second half performance was dreadful. They just could not get a foothold in that game. I, I just don't think that's good enough at home against a mid-table team to be completely played off the park in that way, barely be able to get a touch of the ball. I mean... Yeah, but Sassuolo beat Juventus and Roma. I mean, it's not an average team, right? So you know what? There's there's still Sassuolo. I mean, we're, we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be happy about being outplayed by anyone at home. No, but Sassuolo is the typical team that lose against Cremonese and then go beat Inter at home. And let's not forget our re track record with Sassuolo. Sassuolo is dreadful. Yeah, it but I think we're talking about two different things. I'm, I don't get me wrong. I'm the result was good, but I don't think the full performance was good. I think I don't think you can look back on that with great pride. What a last year performance! No, but you have to consider we didn't have. Um, Romagnoli, that is very important. We lost Vecino, we lost Cataldi. We were playing, I mean, Mourinho completely... yeah, again, so a good result, but not a good performance. No, not a good performance, but I mean, with all those missing players, I think you couldn't just you couldn't expect much more, right? Possibly not, possibly not. I mean, uh. You would you would like to think you could. <laughs> I mean, Marcos Antonio have just been praising. So one of the players you've talked about who is missing, we've replaced him and, and he's coming yeah. and done a great job. The That's other one, I want. guess, is is perhaps more of a talking point is uh okay, it's another clean sheet, which is great, but uh Patrick hasn't felt very rock steady this season. <laughs> And uh, it was quite funny, the moment especially where that cross comes into the box and he throws himself at it and gets a fit on it. And we're all probably hearts and mouths thinking, oh my God, Patrick scored an own goal. And then he gets up and starts celebrating like, that's exactly what I meant to do. <laughs> just put it just wide of the post. That's what I was aiming for. Um, but yeah, I think that the... Yeah, to, to, to hold out and get the clean sheet, of course, is good. But I don't think you want to be inviting uh, inviting pressure in the way that they were for that entire second half. And then, obviously, the second goal is just a result of that the, the game being basically one where Sassuolo were looking like the team to score at the end. And it's a breakaway. That's the only reason there's a second goal. Because well, they're piling on the pressure uh, even more so than they were before. So don't yeah don't get me wrong at all with a couple of injuries with uh, it being a midweek game with it being an awkward op opponent it's a great it's it is a very good result but it the performance I wasn't that impressed by because I think that Lazio are better than this and that with the team they had on the pitch they're capable of producing a higher level of performance and and not ceding control in the way that they did. I don't know. I mean, I was expecting that. Especially, remember, we finished in midfield with Luis Alberto playmaker and Minico Savic that was playing with Sassuolo and Basic on the other side. I mean, it's not easy to win a game like that with these players playing that position. So, and again, Pedro came in, but it doesn't look he's in great shape, right? So, and, and the importance of the game, I think, affected a little bit the performance of, of Lazio. 
but you know, I saw, I saw definitely. I mean, I think Lazio played much better against Sassuolo rather than against Torino, right? Yeah, I mean that wasn't difficult, but yeah. <laughs> what did you think about Chiro and his well, the performance first, and then also the reaction to being replaced? Well, I don't think he had the reaction because he was subbed. He knew it was coming. Uh, I think he was upset because he didn't score again. And well, he did. Nine, <laughs> yeah, number nine. I mean, he celebrated a lot that goal. So yeah. this this tells you how much. He was counting on that. He needed a goal. Um, he started well. I thought he's not 100% fit, and you could see it. In the second half, he pretty much disappeared. So that's that's one of the problems with Chiron. And uh, it, still, going back to Felipe Anderson, it's unbelievable that with Chiron Mobile like this, and Felipe Anderson and uh, Milinko Isaic playing so badly, it's unbelievable that Lazio is their second. This tells you how much this team changed. But we need we need Chiro. We need him back. I think he's going to play. Well, he's going to play definitely tomorrow. And uh, it would be good to see him scoring because he needed badly. Um, but probably play better compared to the Inter game. But I think he has 45 minutes in the leg, not more. So you can see that in the second half, he was really struggling to make it to, to run. So, yeah, we uh, just to answer one of the questions we did get on Twitter this week as well. It was, do we need a backup to Chiro Immobile? The answer is yes. <laughs> and we've talked about this for five years. So I don't think we need to go back into this again. But let's just say the answer is yes. Um, yeah, I think that, yeah, you could tell there's a lot of built up frustration in Chiro at the moment. I, I thought that before, even like you say, with the celebration, it was like he's releasing a lot more than than he usually does when he scores a tap in like that. It was um, a good goal, then, by the way. Yeah, and he, we saw a few signs of the old Chiro movement. There was one absolutely classic kind of run down the left, cutting inside, going for the far corner. That kind of stuff is just like textbook Chiro Immobile, which I like to see. But, um, yeah, his look, his his form isn't isn't back to the standards it was at before, of course. But he's had to deal with a lot recently. He's had a, it's like like I said after the car accident, we can't treat this like any other injury because it's clearly going to leave him shaken up. His kids were in the car when this happened. There's been a whole like media obsession with the traffic lights and what happened and who's at fault, and it's it's a lot of kind of nasty stuff going on at once for him. So. Uh, yeah, I think that it's not necessarily a sign that, you know, Chiro's done or anything like that. We've had this conversation throughout the season, but um, but maybe we just need to give him. I think you said we need a Vice Mobile. I think we need someone who can play instead of Chiro. Because, I mean, if we play against Milan and Chiro is injured, we need someone good enough to play and guarantee us that... We are going to be yeah. dangerous. We are going to be competitive. I think three the years ago has changed. Yeah, I think three years ago we needed a vision mobile. Now we need someone who I don't want to say put up a competition with Chiro, but someone who can replace Chiro without us saying, "Oh my God, Chiro's missing. We're going to struggle." Yeah. And at the same time, I don't think Felipe Anderson is that player. Not because he's not playing well in that position. He's been amazing, but like that. Felipe Anderson is playing every single game and he cannot make it for three years in a row. Or if Felipe Anderson is the Vision Mobile, then we need a very good winger that can rest Felipe Anderson in some situation. But I would love to have a, a real number nine playing behind Chile Mobile, but a good one. So it hasn't been in Cancellieri can be the answer. We need someone who's proven someone who played at a certain level, someone who, you know, against Inter, I'm resting Chiro because I need him in the Champions League. We have this guy. I'm good. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. I think that the idea of what we need has changed over the years. It used to be a backup, someone who fits in for the midweek games or the Europa League games or whatever, whereas now I think you're right. We need someone who can alternate, someone who is 
pretty much fighting with him for that spot and is able to come in and compete. And then having Anderson as a kind of third choice option there is, is the ideal situation. Um, should we quickly talk about uh, the Milan game a little bit? Because I think it, it's an interesting one that the, so Milan, the, con the context of Milan is interesting right now. Yeah, Milan dropped points at home against Cremonese. I definitely didn't see that coming. Never, ever. No. Nope. But they rotate a lot. So my question... Almost lost as well. Very close to losing. Yeah. And the, the question is, Alistair, they rotate a lot on Wednesday. Do you think they're going to rotate again on Saturday? But if they play the starters, they have the Champions League derby coming on. It would be a huge risk playing the starters against Lazio. But like Inter last Saturday, this is a playoff game for them. If they lose, they're pretty much out or not. Well, yeah, it's a fascinating situation there. And, and Pioli's found himself in, uh, in in a lot of trouble really now because before the uh, the last game, the Napoli game in the Champions League, when they rotated, he rotated 10 players, yeah. everyone apart from Mike Mignon, and, and they lost. Um, then, obviously, this week, he's gone and done another big rotation and they very nearly lose to Cremonese. But this is all happening in the name of their Champions League campaign, and it's and this it is important, I think, to underline that for a, for a club like Milan, seven-time European champions, the Champions League is, of course, massively important. That is going to be a priority. Yeah. They've got their they got Inter in the semi-finals. This is a hugely important moment for them. But it, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because they're going to have to go on and win the Champions League if they're going to qualify for it. Basically, how likely is that to happen? I don't know. Is it that the easier route for them to be in the Champions League is through their Serie A games yeah. than by winning the Champions League? But in my opinion, they're absolutely right to focus on the Champions League because what's the point of qualifying for it if you're not going to go and take it seriously once you reach the semi finals? Yeah, I would just you know? say one thing that probably seeing how the other teams are performing, they don't need to win this game against Lazio. I mean, if they lose against Lazio, they're not out of the race because there's Roma Inter at the same time and you went to Atalanta. By the way, I didn't expect Atalanta to, to be back in the Champions League race. So other teams will drop points this weekend. So even if they lose against us, they'll have time and points to recover. But at the same time, you know, losing or not winning two games in a row at home, that would be massive. Um, it's true that if they win the Derby, everything changed. But at the moment, Alzer, I think Inter is playing much better. So I, I cannot see Milan winning this one in the, in the Champions League. But yeah, I mean, I hope they rotate even the goalkeeper against us. But... Don't know. I, I think I think it's going to be really hard. Well, yeah, it's it's a, it's this fascinating question of what what did that rotation indicate against Cremonese? Because it, it wasn't quite the full uh, ten players that they that Pioli's done before. Looking at the team, they still had Calabria, Benacer, uh, Brahim Diaz. They still had guys who would be in their first choice team starting. Does that now mean that? The other guys are going to come back in. Are we going to see Rafael Leao starting against Lazio? Probably Giroud, Tonali, uh, Tomori, you know, these Teo Hernandez. I, I don't know. It's it's so fascinating because we've seen what Pioli's strategy has been. It's been quite clear so far, but now he, he will not have penciled in a draw with Cremonese into his expectations. No. And there is clearly an enormous difference between full strength Milan and what they can do and the rotated Milan and what they're capable of. So it's it really is a fascinating one. I'm I'm glad it's not us in this situation because I I, I don't know, I don't really know what the best thing for him to do is. <laughs> yeah, and in the last five games in Serie A, they won just one, but they never lost. They have four draws and just one win. So yeah, this is I mean, that said, you know, Inter have got Roma as well, so it's not like they've both got very difficult decisions to make. Um, so I guess yeah. that's something they might he might look across and say, well, 
they're they're in the same boat here. Inter in, in a position really where they can go and rotate their whole team and, and go to the Olympico and expect to beat Roma very easily. So um, then again, Inter have a deeper squad and a squad that is rotated more often and more effectively. Yeah. So yeah, fascinating weekend this one. Do you expect Marcos Antonio to start? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, if Cataldi's not fit, which he isn't, well, well what's Cataldi's uh, status? He's he's recovering. He's trying to recover, but he didn't train so far. So mm. yeah, I mean, I think I think he probably will. Yeah, because Fasino's out got, of got his issues. So. Um, yeah, I think he kind of has to. I mean, for me, it'd be Antonio Alberto Milinkovic, but you're you're wanting to get rid of Milinkovic, so. Well, I don't want to get rid of the player. I I, I want the real Milinkovic back. So maybe a bench against Milan, he gets upset and come in in the second half and and perform. But yeah, let's not forget three o'clock kickoff. It's gonna be really hot. It's gonna be really hot. That not this is again. <laughs> Sadi doesn't like the sun. No, no, no. So it's gonna be, it's gonna have an impact. But again, the biggest question mark is which team Pioli is gonna pick? Because obviously the Champions League game is more important for them. So it, it would be good last year to take advantage of this. Yeah, I think it's a huge opportunity for Lazio. You know, on, the, on any other given weekend, it's it's always going to be a difficult game. I think it'll be a difficult game either way. But because, you know, the crowd is going to be demanding something as well, because it's important that they go into that that Champions League match with confidence, with morale. Because if you think about it that way, Pioli's probably looking at this and he's like, well, weighing up the tiredness versus the momentum factor, well, is he not better off playing a full strength team against Lazio? Because the the prospect of losing this game and what that would mean then going into the Champions League semi final on the back of a draw with Cremonese and a defeat to Lazio, it's not not where they're going to want to be in a in a kind of a team morale basis, I guess. Yeah, but they draw against Bologna and then go and beat Napoli in the Champions League. So I mean, I think it's changes everything we saw inter underperforming in Serie A and go and, go and beat everybody in champions league so i don't know i mean anyway it's going to be really interesting a very important weekend i think not decisive for lazio i mean if we win obviously we have a big chance of finishing in the top four but i mean for the first three position uh, it's going to be a long race especially seeing how juventus is stepping up now uh, recovering Pogba and starting playing better football. I will never call it good football, but better football. So it's going to be exciting. We have five games, and this probably is going to be the hardest, I, I guess, for Lazio going forward. So a very important match against Milan. Let's not forget, Alisson, something very important. In the last 32 years, Lazio just won twice away in Serie A against Milan. Twice in 32 years. That's a long time. So let's hope we can Win another one. One was relatively recently, though, wasn't it? One, one was the last one. Yeah, the last one of Inzaghi, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's see. Yeah, like you say, a huge weekend and uh, is setting up this the top four race nicely. Uh, just final word on it's sad to say that our Scudetto bid is finally over after last night. Yeah. So congratulations to Napoli. They were worthy competitors in this two horse race for the Serie A title <laughs> and uh, they just just edged us in the end i didn't know we were in the scudetto race but thanks for just, just find out yeah uh, <laughs> yeah anyway uh, we have to say that it was a huge surprise at the beginning of the season nobody put rome uh, napoli in the in the race for the champion for the scudetto they put roma but not napoli so this was surprising deserved i think it was clear from January that they were going to win the Scudetto. So big credits to Napoli. And yeah. maybe this will show the road for Lazio, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, four champions in four years. Napoli have built a team sustainably. They've done it through smart scouting, through clever recruitment. They're not financially light years ahead of Lazio. So, you know, it's it goes it's a victory really for, for strategy and for having 
good people in in senior positions who are making smart choices and then you can build something you really can so no i think it, it it's been a fantastic story and they've played great football and i think they're really really worthy winners so um but yeah it's, it is interesting for a club of lazio's profile to look at that and try and learn what what they lessons they can take because you never know yep definitely well crossing fingers tare or who will be in place of tare will learn the lesson uh, thanks, everybody, for listening a little bit longer today, but we had to recover the missing Inter-Lazio podcast. And uh, we'll be back after Milan-Lazio, hopefully talking about uh, a better result than the last time we went to San Siro. Take care. Cheers.